In this video, we're going to look at how to create a species richness map for your county. MapMate makes it quite easy to create a species richness map at 10 km square level, and this can be done through the special maps menu, as we'll see in a moment. But for use at county level, it's often better to have a species richness map set up for tetrads, and that's fairly easy to do, and having created our 10 km square map, we'll then go through the steps that are needed to set it to tetrad level. So, to start with, we need to go to the File menu, New Map, Special Map Wizard. We'll choose Vascular Plants for our species group, and in this example we're looking at data for South Hampshire, Vice County 11. So we'll choose the Vice County 11 base map, and from this long list of options here, the one we're looking for is the one that says Species Density 10 km. As we've seen before, MapMate produces a rather long name for the map, so we will just edit that name to something a bit more manageable. And now click on OK. And what MapMate has produced for us is a set of squares in each 10 km square across our county, and the larger the black square, the more species have been recorded in that square. As with many of the maps in MapMate, you can click and drag across one of the squares and then choose Trace to see all the records that underlie that particular square. So that's very quick and easy to do, but how can we adjust this map so that it refers to tetrads rather than 10 km squares? To do that, we need to open up the feature list by clicking on the little drop down arrow, and we're looking for the data object which in this case is called the Species Density 10 km. And if we right-click over that feature name, we can choose to Show Underlying Data, and from there we can click on the SQL button to see the code that is actually producing the dots on the map. To adjust this for 2 km square level rather than 10 km, it's very easy. All you need to do is find every mention of 10k all the way through this code and change it to 2k. Once you're sure that you've changed all the 10s to 2s, you can click on the Save button, overwrite the map query with those changes, and it tells you that the query's been updated, but the map won't actually change until you reload the map. So we OK, close. I'll close up the feature list again for the moment. Back to the File menu, click on Reload, and we are now looking at a species richness map at Tetrad level. But it looks like a big mess of black at the moment, um, and that's uh, not very well displayed. And the reason it looks like that is because although it's presenting the 2 km square data, it's still drawing big black squares the size of a 10 km square. So that's the next thing we need to adjust. And we go back into the feature list, find our data object again, and we can see here that it's drawing it up to 8 km across for the squares, which is way too big for a tetrad size square. So if we right click where it says 8 km, and we have a choice to go straight down to 2 kilometers, And that immediately makes the map look much more meaningful and suitable for the scale that we're dealing with. You may decide that this is all you need to do and that this map shows what you want um, perfectly adequately. It shows the tetrads which have relatively the most species compared to the ones with less recording and would help you to target your recording efforts to fill in the gaps. But you might want to play around with it a little bit just to adjust the way it looks. And if we go back into the feature list, sometimes I, for these tetrad maps, I actually make the size of the dots slightly larger than two kilometers, just to emphasize the ones that are most recorded. The easiest way to do that is to choose 20% larger. And that just makes the black dots on the most recorded squares slightly larger than the square itself, just to emphasize them a little bit. You might decide that it looks better as open squares rather than filled in ones, and you can adjust that in the Style column by right-clicking and unticking the filled. Or you might decide that actually you do want it to remain filled, but by right-clicking again you can choose it to be a dot rather than a square. 
Once you've got the shape and size you want, you can also adjust the color by right clicking line color and choosing the color that you wish to display. So as I say, that's quite a quick and easy way of producing a species richness map for your county at two kilometers square level. The one thing this map doesn't do is to actually tell you how many species there are in each of those squares. In the next video, we'll look at a slightly more complicated option that will allow you to produce a map with different colors for different numbers of species in each square. But to give a visual representation of which of the tetrads have the most species recorded in your county, this one works perfectly well and is quick and easy to do.